The 2024 IMSA season is complete, and the finale at Michelin Raceway Road Atlanta was an outstanding success. Championships were decided, dramatic incidents took place, and unexpected winners were crowned as the track played host to racing for 10 hours and a transition from day to night. So this is the breakdown of what happened during the IMSA finale of Motul Petit Le Mans. For this event, all but one championship would be decided, with Mercedes clinching the GTD manufacturer's title at Indianapolis last time out. During qualifying, Jack Aiken would achieve Action Express Racing's fourth pole position of the year with the number 31 Wheeling Cadillac, with Ben Keating setting the pace in LMP2 for United Autosports. GTD Pro Championship leaders AO Racing would lead the field to green, and Lauren Heinrich's record-breaking lap of a 117.881 would be very crucial late into the race, as I'll explain later on. Meanwhile, taking their first ever pole in IMSA would be Lone Star Racing, as the number 80 GTD Mercedes would lead that class away with Scott Andrews behind the wheel. During the start of this event, Jack Aiken would hold on to the lead in GTP, but the focus would be on Connor DeFilippi's number 25 BMW as the M Hybrid V8 would jump into second ahead of the number 7 Porsche Penske. It would be a clean start to the race amongst the entire field of cars, as Rexy led the GT field from the two Pratt Miller Corvettes. But like all big endurance races, there was bound to be drama later on, and just 7 minutes into the race, the 01 Chip Ganassi Cadillac was given a warning by IMSA to fix a torque sensor issue. The V-Series R, with Sebastian Bourdais behind the wheel, would rejoin in 11th place in GTP, but unfortunately, it would lose a lap because of the trip to the pit lane. But 11th is definitely not where the team would finish later on. As the race progressed, more drama would follow, this time over in GTD, because with just 20 minutes into the race, the number 80 Mercedes spun in the S's, with Scott Andrews behind the wheel. This was the complete opposite to what Lone Star Racing had experienced at the end of qualifying, with the Texan team grabbing pole position, and the AMG GT3 would unfortunately drop to the very back of the field because of this incident. Back up at the front in GTP, after some pit stops, it would be Jordan Taylor in the number 40 Acura leading after not pitting. Aiken in the number 31 Cadillac dropped to third following this great move by the number 5 Mustang sampling Porsche of Alessio Piccarello, followed by the two 963s from Porsche Penske completing the top 5. And later on, the lead would be reclaimed by Action Express, as Aiken moved the V-Series R into first overall, ahead of the Acura. Elsewhere, our first major incident happened when contact was made between the leading LMP2 entry, which was Ben Keating's number 2 United car, and the number 4 Pratt Miller Motorsports Corvette. Both cars received major damage, with the Corvette unfortunately being forced to retire from the race. Thankfully though, the good news was that Tommy Milner was able to climb out of the car unhurt. Keating, meanwhile, returned his car with visible damage to the pit lane. But following this incident, the day was pretty much over for the crew of the number 2 car, and they couldn't fight for the win again. Now, I quickly want to point out a scary moment for one of the Ferraris, because the Inception racing car had a spin at turn 12, but just barely avoided hitting the wall hard and ending the race for the team. So a great save for sure by the Inception racing driver. Later on, the number 31 Cadillac was having such a good race up until it was given a drive through penalty for passing another car under yellow flag conditions, which forced the V-Series R to relinquish the lead to the Porsche Penske Motorsport team, as Matt Campbell took over the leading position in the championship leading number 7 Porsche. Another contender for the lead of a class that faced drama was the number 14 Vassar Sullivan Lexus, which stopped out on track just before the back straight, and was eventually forced to retire with an engine issue, becoming the second retirement of this venue. So while the number 14 crew faced a devastating end to their race, Vassar Sullivan Lexus still had the number 12 car in contention for a podium of Petit Le Mans. 
Now, I hate to be the bearer of bad news for Rexy fans, but the AO Racing Porsche was not having a good race at this point. The car was having gearbox issues, where it couldn't upshift, forcing the drivers, such as WEC Proton Hypercar driver Julian Anlauer, to be stuck in gears such as 4th and 5th, which of course made things difficult to manage while driving. Thankfully, the issues for Rexy were mended, but the car dropped many positions with the championship title in jeopardy, with the number 23 Heart of Racing Aston Martin in a good position to secure a strong finish in this race. This was clearly turning out to be the most intense championship battle across this final IMSA round of the season. In the GTP class, we got our first two retirements in a matter of 10 laps. JDC Miller's Porsche was unfortunately the first car to retire, with the team forcing to pull their 963 into the garage with a power steering issue, which is definitely a very big problem to have, as proven last race at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway when Nazar's number 7 Porsche encountered a similar problem. This was a difficult end to Richard Westbrook's career, as the British driver announced that Motul Petit Le Mans would be his last race in motorsport. But outside the result in this event, he can look back on an incredible motor racing career with many accomplishments which included two overall podium finishes for American manufacturers at the 24 Hours of Le Mans, one with Glickenhaus in 2022, and the other a year later with Cadillac in 2023. The second retirement was for the number 25 BMW, when the car suffered an engine issue. Just like JDC Miller, this retirement was another difficult farewell for a certain driver as Nicky Lowley would be leaving BMW after this race to join MSR Acura next year in 2025. Moving on, and in the lead for GTP, things were getting pretty exciting. With under four hours remaining, the battle for the win became a three-way fight between the two Porsche Penske entries and the number 10 Konica Minolta Acura. While on the subject for the lead of this race, I just want to point out an interesting fact. The drivers on board the number 10 Acura and the number 6 Porsche battling for the overall win were Brendan Hartley and Kevin Estra. Interestingly, these are not the two full-time drivers of these cars, and you will more commonly see them battling for the win in the World Endurance Championship, with Hartley a part of the Toyota squad in that series, and Estra a part of Porsche as well in the WEC. Now, as night descended across the track, these two cars continued their battle for the overall lead of the race, until drama struck for one of them. Arguably, our biggest crash of the race happened when the number 55 Proton Ford Mustang had a huge wreck at the exit of Turn 5 and actually sat in the middle of the track. This incident also involved the number 120 Wright Porsche and one GTP car. When multiple cars approached that section of the track, they tried their best to avoid the incident, but unfortunately, Ricky Taylor's number 10 Acura wasn't so lucky. The Wayne Taylor Racing car's left-hand side scraped the Ford when trying to pass, which gave the car major damage. And while on the subject of multiple cars involved, I do want to point out that Philippines number 24 BMW barely avoided a collision, which I would define it as a very close call. Back to Wayne Taylor Racing Andretti though, and the number 10 Acura, which was in second place at the time, slowly limped back to the pits with damage. The team carefully assessed the situation, but unfortunately were forced to retire the Acura from the venue which was absolutely heartbreaking, not just because the entry was involved in the fight for the overall win of this event, but because of the dreadful luck that Wayne Taylor Racing has had here at Petit Le Mans. As for the last four years, their chances of winning came to an unsatisfactory conclusion. Once Green Flag Racing would return, with just over 30 minutes to go, this is where things got really intense across all four classes. In the flagship class of GTP, Nick Tandy was leading in the number 6 Porsche, followed by Renger van der Zande in the 01 Cadillac, which had surprisingly moved into race winning contention, with the number 24 BMW rounding off the top 3. However, the M Hybrid V8 wouldn't stay there for long, 
because at the final heavy braking zone, contact was made between Ian's BMW and Nazar's number 7 Porsche, which forced the 963 off the track. And while that was going on, there was some fierce side-by-side -side action between the number 11 TDS and the number 74 Riley LMP2 cars for the lead of this category. Jensen was trying to hold on to the lead, while Fraga not only was trying to claim it, but beat the number 52 Orica to the championship title. However, while this battle was great, Jensen would ultimately stay ahead in the lead of LMP2. Back to GTP, and eventually, the number 24 BMW was handed a drive through penalty for the collision with the number 7 Porsche at turn 10. And along with the number 31 Whelan Cadillac also getting a penalty, this resulted in the overall lead becoming a two horse race between Porsche and Cadillac. Ranger van der Zande, who knew this would be his and Chip Ganassi's last race with Cadillac, would find the courage to bravely send a move on Nick Tandy's Porsche. However, it wouldn't be smooth sailing for Cadillac for the remainder of this race. Over in the GT classes, things were getting really intense. GTD Pro was being led by the number 19 Lamborghini Ion Lynx, but the focus was mainly on the battle for P2. The number 23 Heart of Racing Aston Martin was going for the championship, and with Rexy down the order, if the car got past the number 62 Risi Ferrari into second, the team would win the championship and with time ticking down, a move had to come quick to claim the title. Meanwhile, GTD saw a fierce battle for the lead, involving two Italian GT cars. Albert Costa Balboa was trying to hold on to the lead of this class for Conquest Racing, as he defended against the number 78 Lamborghini from Forte Racing. And not only were these two cars battling for the win, but they were also battling for fourth place in the championship standings. Up in GTP, the 01 Cadillac was suffering with some headlight issues, which forced the car to only have one headlight, which was a difficulty in itself. But then, things got more intense when in the final few minutes of this race, the Cadillac lost both its headlights, which of course gave Ranger van der Zande limited visibility. This was almost an impossible situation to manage, and I gotta hand it to Ranger for this, because think of the circumstances. The driver is racing a car at night with no headlights, which is traveling on a track with multiple elevation changes and tricky corners at over 150 miles per hour while in the overall lead with a few minutes left. And if that wasn't enough pressure, just add on the fact that this is a multi-class race where drivers like Ranger have to manage slower cars in both the LMP2 and GT classes. So to see Ranger drive during these circumstances and not lose a position or go off track was absolutely phenomenal. Despite the headlight drama and the pressure from the number 6 Porsche, with Nick Tandy closing the gap to just 2.6 seconds, Ranger van der Zande was able to hold on to first place and eventually cross the line in that position. And for one final time, drivers Sebastian Bourdais, Ranger van der Zande, and Scott Dixon would share the top step of the podium in IMSA. Now, it wasn't just Cadillac Racing celebrating, because Porsche Penske finished second and third overall, and the number 7 Porsche was able to clinch the GTP Championship title in 2024 after a fantastic season, started by that remarkable win many months ago at Daytona. In LMP2, back-to-back -back wins would be achieved by the number 11 TDS racing entry. Steven Thomas, Mikkel Jensen, and Hunter McElray would take the win in the class, with the number 74 Riley coming away with second, and the number 18 era motorsports entry rounding off the podium. In GTD Pro, it would be a first win for the number 19 Lamborghini Iron Lynx entry, as Jordan Pepper, Frank Pereira, and Lamborghini hypercar driver Mirko Borolotti coming away with the win. This would in fact be Lamborghini's first win in IMSA since this exact event last year in 2023 when Forte Racing took the victory. 
The remaining podium positions would be taken by the number 62 Risi Competizione Ferrari and the number 23 Heart of Racing Aston Martin. And because there wasn't a change in position for second, this meant that the number 77 AO Racing Rexy Porsche had done enough to secure the title by just four points, meaning that Lauren Heinrich's lap that put him on pole position in the previous day of qualifying is what won AO Racing the championship title in 2024. Finally, GTD was won by the number 34 Conquest Racing Ferrari, as drivers Albert Costa Balboa, Cedric Sparazuali, and Manuel Franco took the team's second win of the season and first in GT Daytona. Second place would go to last year's winners, Forte Racing with their number 78 Lamborghini, with Vassar Sullivan Racing's number 12 Lexus rounding off the podium. As for the final championship standings heading out of Petit Le Mans, in GTP, as I mentioned before, the number 7 Porsche Penske would indeed secure the title, with the number 6 Porsche Penske finishing out the season placed in second, which would allow Porsche to also secure the Manufacturer's Championship in the GTP class. The 01 Chip Ganassi Cadillac would complete the top 3, followed by the number 31 Whelan Cadillac and the number 40 WTR Andretti Acura completing the final top 5 in the standings. Meanwhile, the LMP2 class title was won by the number 52 Inter Europol by PR1 Matheson Motorsports Entry, which has secured quite a lot of success over the last few years, as the car also won the IMSA LMP2 championship last year in 2023. The number 74 Riley would finish runner-up in the championship, with the number 18 era Motorsports Orica 07 in third. The wins at Indianapolis and Road Atlanta solidify fourth place in the standings for the number 11 TDS racing car, with the number 2 United Autosports Orica rounding off the top 5. As mentioned before, the GTD Pro category's final standings displays the number 77 AO Racing Rexy Porsche taking the title with Porsche also taking the manufacturer's title in this class. Following Rexy is the number 23 Heart of Racing Aston Martin, which had a brilliant season, with the number 3 Corvette from Pratt Miller Motorsports moving into third. Meanwhile, the top 5 in the class is concluded by the number 1 Paul Miller Racing BMW and the number 14 Vassar Sullivan Lexus. Finally, the GTD standings were dominated by Mercedes this year as the number 57 Windward Racing entry did indeed take the title, and as I mentioned before, Mercedes already clinched the constructors. The number 96 Turner Motorsports BMW does finish in second, followed by the number 32 Korkoff Preston Motorsports Mercedes, the number 34 Conquest Ferrari, and the number 78 Forte Lamborghini rounding off the top five. So, with that race done, the 2024 season of IMSA is complete. Once again, Motul Petit Le Mans delivered an impressive showing of action across the event at Michelin Raceway Road Atlanta. So now, the question is, what next? Well, what I can tell you is that we are under 100 days away until the start of the 2025 season of this extraordinary motorsport. And that first event is the crown jewel of IMSA, the Rolex 24 at Daytona. If you like sports car endurance racing, this might be the channel for you. I'm making content on the WEC, IMSA, and so on every single week. In fact, there are some videos out on your screen all about these topics. But anyway, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.